Okay, so I'm here with Acer's latest uh, Chromebook, actually, the Acer C7 Chromebook, which uh, just recently came out. It's a fairly compelling piece of hardware for just $200, and it's definitely worth a look. I also brought with me an Acer D270 uh, netbook, a standard 10-inch netbook, just for comparison's sake, so we can take a look at the differences in size between the two. Now, the C7 is a nice little device. It's very thin. It's only one inch thin all the way through, uh, and it is an 11.6-inch uh, screen, so as you can see, it's, it's a bit larger than a standard, say, D270 or standard 10-inch netbook. As you can see, it takes up a, quite a bit more space, which means you have to prep for that uh, with your desks for your students as well as your carts, but uh, that added space can be a benefit because you get a lot more screen surface area and you can have actually a full-size keyboard with this device. From a hardware perspective under the hood, this has a Celeron 847 processor. It's running at 1.1 gigahertz. Um, that processor is actually based on Sandy Bridge architecture, which is the same architecture that the Core i3 and i5 of last generation were running. So it is quite fast. In fact, I found it runs about twice as fast as the N2600 uh, Atom processors in the 10-inch uh, netbooks. Um, all on the side, look at the ports. We have a headphone microphone jack here. We have two USB 2 ports, a power jack, and a uh, Kensington key lock. And on the left side I have uh, Ethernet. I have dual display technologies actually. I got VGA or HDMI which is great and another USB port. On the inside I have of course my 11 inch 0.6 inch screen. It is a bit glossy, uh, which is going to, you know, generate the reflections that you're even going to see in the video here. But it is running at 1366 by 768, which is a, a great resolution and makes it uh, much more capable with some of those more com complicated user interfaces. I have a chiclet keyboard. It is a full-size keyboard and it does actually feel great. Uh, it does have these custom uh, Chrome keys on it, the back, forward, reload, and those sorts of things. And the uh, Windows key down here has been replaced by a magnifying glass or a search key, which is kind of interesting. It also has a click pad, and it's actually not a bad click pad. It works fairly well. Now you may notice I'm running uh, Ubermix on this one. I prefer to have an operating system that actually do stuff, <laughs> so I've uh, worked out a way to get Ubermix installed on it, and Ubermix works very well. I even have multi-touch on the trackpad and all tap pad and all those sorts of things working. There are some drawbacks, of course, to using a, a Chromebook with a, a free operating system like Ubuntu or Ubermix. Uh, the primary one being that you have to do some special jumping through hoops to get it to work. So for this particular machine, for example, you have to put it into developer mode, you have to install a custom BIOS, and then you kind of have to install Ubermix alongside uh, the uh, Google Chrome uh, OS, uh, which works okay, but it's not obviously ideal. It'd be nicer if we could just get rid of that altogether. Uh, the biggest drawback of that, of course, is uh, when we restart the machine, and I'll show you here in a second, it gives you this really scary warning that says, hey, hey, you're running in developer mode. Uh, it's a, it can be a real drawback because it says press space to re-enable. Uh, if you press the space bar, what it's going to do is it's going to go back to Chrome OS and kind of turn off your uh, Linux installation, which is a bummer. Also, if you don't know any better, you can sit here and look at this splash screen for a full 30 seconds before it actually boots. If you know, you can press the Control D and then it boots up just fine and you'll see it boots actually quite fast. I uh, haven't had to sacrifice any real functionality on this, um, though it does work very well with Ubuntu, it does work very well with Ubermix, even supports the auto reset features and those sorts of things, so it's, it is a fairly compelling option, but again, you know, considering that funny boot up situation and the uh, just the overall uh, weirdness of the uh, hardware itself, it might be something you want to think twice about before putting it in front of kids. But again, a nice little device, uh, as far as battery life goes, it is a four cell battery, so it's a little bit on the small side. I've been getting consistently about four hours and 15 minutes of battery life out of it. And the charger works fairly fast, so it will charge back up in about an hour and 45 to an hour and 50 minutes, which makes it uh, reasonable in a classroom. Just got to keep in mind, four hours or so is going to be your limit. I have seen online a $50 battery upgrade that gets you to a 6 cell and should get you about 7 hours of battery life, which might be worth it because the device even then would still only be $249. So that's the C7 Chromebook. I hope you'll check it out. It's not, not a bad device as I said, it's just, uh, you know, you gotta, gotta consider those little quirks. Definitely recommend running Ubuntu on it over Chrome OS because you really want something that's just going to be able to do everything that you need to do when you're on the road, whether you're connected or not.